We were in the garage and the two Howard County policemen came up. They said, are you, are you the father of Joey Bonavitacola? He said he was found dead today in a home in Phelps Luck and of apparent drug overdose. It was like getting hit with a sledgehammer. It's the worst pain that um, you can imagine. Right, it's awful. Yes, it is. Joey played football for four years. He was very slight, but he played with a lot of heart and he was very scrappy. It was great being there and in the crowd. Always at the 50 yard line, that was my spot. We didn't sit together a lot of times because um, of the screaming. <laughs> yeah, we had to keep a little distance. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, was, uh, I would always hurt his ears, but I think Joey liked that sort of thing too, you know. He didn't really have to look, he could hear me. <laughs> Went to the sound. <laughs> Yeah. And we started to notice some changes in him uh, right after he graduated high school. There was some uncertainty with him about what he was going to do after at CCBC, what actually started in October. In June, I guess it was, he, he left the house. He was arguing with Dream a lot, basically not following the rules of the house. And I said, if you, if you can't do that, you know, there's the door. And he went, he went out the door and he started staying with, with different friends and we would see him a few times here and there. We were constantly after Joey to come home. The last time we saw him was September the 1st and he did not look like our son. He was thin, he um, was gaunt and pale and I said to Andy when he- He wasn't taking care of himself. I said to Andy, I saw said the that, big doesn't, change. that doesn't look like our son. The officer was investigating and said most likely he went to sleep and the friend said that they had, had covered him up on the couch and he had fallen asleep, but he was actually overdosing. Well, they said he was snoring very loudly and that is what um, is an indication of a heroin overdose. The coroner said they, they found the alcohol, cocaine and heroin in his system and basically that's a, that's a knockout punch. Right. He wasn't coming back from that. Maybe we'll think that it's not gonna to happen to me. It's not gonna to happen to me. I'm, you know, my kids know what they're doing, it's not gonna to happen to me. I mean, I did have a mindset myself about this, about who would take heroin, and, and our eyes have been opened. Substance use disorder uh, knows no boundaries. It doesn't discriminate. It can happen to anyone at any time, and uh, we do not want this to happen to another family. One of the reasons why we had an open casket is because originally I stood back and I thought, you know what, if we can save a life, we'll try. So we're going to have an open casket and they're going to walk past him and this too could be you. And I know that sounds harsh, but going through this is harsh. Nobody is immune to this opioid crisis.